Now I want to talk about the two funky fresh port IO styles which you may encounter when you're looking at some BIOS code. There is the address data style and there is the poke peak style, which I specifically differentiate from the normal peak poke. Now address data style is the type that you saw in architecture 2001 when we were dealing with the CMOS. This is the case where you've got the black box, which is port IO peripheral over there. And there's one port that is used to specify an address somewhere inside of that block, black box, essentially treating it as if it was some sort of array or some sort of you know, list of registers. One port specifies an address and the next port specifies the data, data either being read from or written to the particular address that was specified. So in the case of CMOS, we saw how the first addresses were just used for the real-time clock bytes and then addresses after that were the actual non-volatile storage of CMOS. But this particular style, address data, is going to be the one that we're going to see repeatedly throughout the rest of the class in the context of port IO access to PCIe devices. Now the other one I call poke peak because more often than not, especially when you're talking about the context of a BIOS where everything has just been reinitialized and everything's clean start, most often you're going to have the CPU or the BIOS doing some sort of poke to the black box, sending a command to the black box, and then reading back data from that particular peripheral. Now, of course, you could read it first. You could have a peak, which happens to just, you know, be checking the default initialized status of a black box. But the software that knows how to deal with the black box probably knows what its default initialized power reset state is, and so they probably usually just skip right to poking it instead of peaking it. In the poke peak paradigm, usually it is a single port, and it may be 8 bits, it may be 32 bits, but it's a single port where both of the writes and the reads are accessing the same port. It's not a two-port pair like in the address data style. So in the Simix Debug 1015 class, it was shown how to feed a different BIOS image into Simix and be able to see the assembly and step through it if you'd like. Now for those of you who happen to be on your way towards the Architecture 4031 class on Core Boot, you were recommended to purchase something like an Optiplex 710 or 9010. And if you were to throw that image in there, you would see something like this. And this is just within the first few dozen assembly instructions that actually execute after it gets itself out of real mode. So if we take a closer look at this, we can actually see some patterns. We see a bunch of out assembly instructions here that are all just writing data out to some particular port. There's no port in here, it's all outs. So some sort of initialization, writing, you know, four out to port 128, writing Fs out to port 33, 237, 161, etc. So that's basically just poking a bunch of different black boxes that we don't necessarily know what they are. There's also some address data accesses. Here, this is going to be taking a port, so CF8 into DX, and then writing some value into that into EAX and then EAX out to CF8. So basically CF8 there, F8 here, F8 there, this is always just setting an address into the DX register to be used as the out address. And then we see the corresponding data here. So this is setting an address and this is writing data out to that address. So specifically Fed1C001 is written out here to port CFC. So this is already has, DX already has CF8 in it. And so this is only writing to DL, the least significant byte. So it's still CFC. So CFC is the port in DX right here. And this is the data that is written out to that port. Then it changes back to the other port, the address port. So this becomes CF8. Then it writes some address to that. And then it changes back to CFC. And then it reads in some data from there. It does an OR on it in order to set a bit and then it writes that value back out to the same address that was already there. So that's an example of just some poke port IO and some address data port IO all happening in the same general location. The spoiler here is that CF8 and CFC are going to be the PCIe ports, which we said we care a lot about because here you go, in the first few dozen assembly instructions, we see access to the PCIe address space.
Then I had a bunch of other miscellaneous bio stumps just laying around on my computer and I was too lazy to go get some new ones. So here's an old MacBook Pro that I was using whenever I was doing the initial Apple research back in 2015. And so let's look at its assembly at the beginning. We can see a poke out to port 128 there. And then we can see some address data access here. Address data, Oop, go back. That was also CF8, CFC. And so we know again that this is going to be PCIe configuration address space accesses in there. And then just some miscellaneous assembly between them. Also, you see some early read and writes to model specific registers. Another thing that we learned about in Architecture 2001. And then I had a HP Elite Book. Again, just one of my demo machines from back in the day. Just had the dump laying around, so I threw it into Simix. And we see a bunch of pokes here. We got two going out to port 128, three going out to port 128, four, five, six, all this going out to port 128, whatever that is. And at least in this first few assembly instructions, we don't see any PCI config address space access. But, you know, walk a little further, you'd probably find some. And if you were to take a look at the default Simix code that comes with it, you would again see some address and data access within the first few assembly instructions. So some inferences we can take away from that just quick sampling of whatever BIOSes I had laying around. First thing is that port 128 must be sort of important because a bunch of the different BIOSes actually access that. And indeed that is important because it is what is typically used for the BIOS power on self-test or post output code. And so that was traditionally a BIOS developer having, you know, very poor development tools. They would rely on things like writing out numbers as they walk through the code in order to have a sense of if the BIOS crashed after number 537, then they would know that, okay, well, I got to 537 and I crashed between 537 and 538. So this was used for basic, you know, essentially printf style debugging of what was going on with the BIOS. And then ports CF8 and CFC must be important because we see those a lot. And indeed, like I said, those are the PCIe port IO ports. And they have to be used before memory mapped IO is available in order to configure things such as the memory mapped IO itself. So there's a way to access PCIe devices through memory mapped IO, but you can't do that until you configure the memory mapped IO. And therefore, you have to do that through port IO to start with. And because, like we said back in the chipset architecture and evolution thing, we said, you know, there's particular devices we care about, like the DRAM controller and the LPC device, but we said that the PCIe is the view that the CPU actually has into the internal guts of the CPU or the PCH. Therefore, the BIOS actually has to access these various configuration registers in the PCH, for instance, via this port IO ports. So what would one do if one wanted to identify these various ports, you know, port 128, port 237, 161, you know, how would you figure that out? And unfortunately, I don't have a better answer for you than Googling. You have to basically just search around, try to find documentation. You can, of course, check and you should check your local documentation, your local data sheets. But more often than not, you're not going to find exactly what you're looking for there. Also, because you know now that variable port I.O. ranges are a thing, you should check whether or not there was anything in the assembly that relocated a particular variable port range to the ports that are in question. Now, of course, it's hard to find that unless you read all of the assembly starting from the very beginning or, you know, search for something approximating the base of a variable port I.O. range. There are some other things such as emulation materials that will frequently list ports those are the very, very old circa 1994 definition of ports. And while some of those may actually still be accurate because of backwards compatibility and various hardware getting accumulated into other hardware, that's not always going to be useful either. All right, so that concludes our recovering of port IO. And like we said, we mostly care about memory mapped IO and port IO because we're trying to get to PCI configuration address space. And we just learned that ports CF8 and CFC are the initial way that you have to use to get to PCI configuration address space, which we're going to learn about next.